Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to episode 70 of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and it's that time again, selection section number 10, our 10th selection section episode. To quote my uh, favorite podcast from my favorite YouTube channel, OSW Review, I'll be quoting Steve V1, and I will say, trying to mimic his Irish accent, Jesus lads, state of our podcast. I mean, seriously, it's amazing to think about that we're only a little over a year from completing our first journey, the road to Independence Day. I mean, that's to me, I don't know. When I, while I was typing up the script, guys, it was just surreal that this is like we're only like a year away from completing Road to Independence Day. And we were we were recording selection section two to figure out the Sink or Swim Summer Tour. So that's amazing. But before we lay out our next path and reveal our next destination, we should do just a brief recap of the rules. Hopefully we have some new listeners and some lapsed listeners that may need a recap. So without further delay, I will send things over to Tom. Thank you, Dan. Tom here, British name Thompson. And yes, this is the Fire Pit Podcast, and we watch and discuss movies and have a little bit of fun along the way, whether the movie is good, bad, or just meh. Although, quietly, we do tend to have a little more fun with the bad ones. Those inspire some rather funny skits. But how we do this is simple, because we don't know what we're going to get ourselves into. Every six weeks, we pick a destination film and then spend six weeks getting to that film by linking an actor or actress from the movie we watched the week before with no repeats during the journey. This means we can't use the same actor or actress as a link more than once a journey. We've stuck to that rule pretty solidly this season. First season was a little rough. Very early season weirdness. See Star Trek The Next Generation. We hadn't got to the nice suits yet. We hadn't grown the beard. But here we are in the second season. Beard has been grown. So We still don't have the good uniforms, though. We no. still don't have the good uniforms. But yet. the beard's there. The beard's there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we may have to deal with Pulaski down the road. But we're yeah, getting we there. Do. We're getting there, guys. The Borg are almost here. We're getting there. Cross your fingers, guys. But all our films we reviewed from last week's Raiders of the Lost Ark link all the way back to our prototype episodes like Showdown in Little Tokyo. It's kind of like the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game, only Kevin Bacon isn't the end goal, though he has been in one or two movies we've seen. Yet to be a destination. He's yeah. yet to be a linker. He's actually been in one, Apollo 13. Yep. That's, That's right. the wow. only Kevin Bacon film. Holy he blew God. that load early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the sink or swims, I mean the uh, road to Independence Day. <laughs> yeah, it was loads of fun, he said with a pun. hey -o. But it does provide a wide variety of movies to watch. But I'm blowing my load all over this one. So Gross. <laughs> on to the reveal. Josh, are we doing Harrison Ford again? Yes. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Wait, no. Crap. I was reading last month's or last uh, selection section. My bad. Yeah, we're going to Raiders of the Lost Ark, guys. No. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, we uh, spent the first half of season two doing some Harrison Ford, but uh, not this time. So Aww. this time, yeah, yeah. But regardless, hello, all the fire pit faithful. I'm Josh, British name Reginald. But uh, yes, we did inadvertently. Like we did not plan this. Mm -hmm. The first three movies of this season starred the one, the only, the Mr. Harrison Ford himself. But for this destination film, we decided that, you know, in order to do it right, we need to be bad to the bone. We need the clothes. We need the boots. We need the motorcycle. But most importantly, we need the sunglasses. That's, That's yes. right. That's the key. That's right. For this journey, the fire pit is going to rush to judgment in 1992's mega hit Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Wait for applause. 
starring the one, the only, the governor himself, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is the mega hit sequel to 1984's The Terminator, both directed by James Cameron and really solidified him as a major director and the one, the only, the Arnold. We have to say that every time we say his name, it's contractually obligated. As a huge, huge box office draw, pun intended. We also (laughs) chose this film (laughs) because uh, this episode... Um, Our destination film episode will actually be releasing around the same time as the movie's fictional Judgment Day of August 29th, not 1997, but 2021. That's all I've got. So let's get on with it because now we're all going to present three lists. Then we get to go round robin style and debate on which one we're going to go first. So Tom's going first, then myself. And then since Dan won won it last time, he gets to uh, be last but not least on presenting his list. Mm -hmm. So Thompson, I'm anxious for your first list. You should be. You should be. Oh, wait, no, that's that's the Yoda thing. That was from our first Destination film. Yes. Uh, so, okay, maybe you don't have to be that anxious about this one. But hopefully you'll still like it. This first list, I'm going to call Out of This World. Because it does involve a lot of weird stuff. So, from Raiders of the Lost Ark, we take Ronald Lacey the man in black himself into Firefox, a movie which we've mentioned a few times already. Nice. Um, Clint Eastwood film about him trying to capture an AI jet fighter in the 1980s. You might have heard of this plot before, but we take the one and only Clint Eastwood, the man with no name into the rookie. Um, And from the rookie, we take Pepe Serna to Buckaroo Banzai. Buckaroo <laughs> Banzai. The... Across the eighth dimension. Thank you, Nigel. I knew you would know the full name of that one. Never and seen it, but I do know the title of that film. I have seen. It's actually a very interesting film, but we can discuss that uh, as we go into this. But in the film, Buckaroo Banzai is Robert Ito, who is also in the cult classic depending on your definition, cult and classic, Rollerball. The original one, not the bullshit one from the 2000s. (laughs) Um, From Rollerball, we take James Caan into Alien Nation. (laughs) I saw that list come up. I was just like, I'm going to avoid that movie. (laughs) (laughs) I've always been curious about that movie, but... From I've never League. seen the movie, but I do remember the television series. Same here. That's Same, the one where yeah. they were bald with like the scaly. Yeah, they had like the red spots. spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah scaly were, red spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they were like those one aliens from Star Trek um, with the, the trill. The, yeah. Yeah. But um, from there, we take Earl Byrne or Bone. I can't pronounce that last name. Into Terminator 2. Again, this was my... You know, weaker list, obviously, but still not a bad list if I must toot my own horn. Yeah. I was wondering if one of us was going to do Firefox. Um, I would not be surprised if all of us wind up doing Firefox, considering. Yeah, how- um, I may have it on a list or three. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you use it more than once, that would average out to one each because I don't. Spoiler alert, don't don't use that one. Oh, okay. Well Yeah. So uh, there, there's that. Well we know whose list we're not gonna pick, Nigel. Yeah. Tom's. Anyone who yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Tom, for a week for a week list, Tom, that's not a bad one. That that, that would no. be interesting. Is that the rollerball? Is that the original or is that the, the two thousand? He said it was the original. Okay. It's the original, yes. Oh, yeah. no, no no way in hell I'm gonna put us through the two thousand. Oh, rollerball. okay, yeah. James, that was the James one, Con. That was the one with Chris Klein, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. That's, yeah. I still remember Tom and I got that movie from like family video or Hollywood video or something one night. Mm-hmm. And we were just like, I still remember we watched it and we were like, after we got to the end credits, we were just like, what the hell happened? Like, what was that? Yes. Nice. Yes. We, we did. We forgot to iterate that. Uh, we kind of have a soft rule that um, we have to have at least two movies on our, each of our lists that the maker of the uh, list has not seen. Ah, so yes. Tom, which movies here have you not seen? 
Well, it's quicker to say which ones I have seen, which are Terminator 2 and Buckaroo Banzai. I've not seen Firefox, but considering all we've talked about it, I want to. The Rookie actually was brought up in a past list. Nigel, you actually mm -hmm. had this way back. This is one that stars Charlie Sheen and has um, Raul Julia as the yep. bad guy. Yep. So I'm kind of glad this one wound up back on the list somehow. Yeah. I think that was, I can't remember which journey that was, but I do remember I had this on a list. I'm trying to, th I think I'm confusing that one with the Dennis Quaid movie. It is not yeah, that movie. Yeah, it's not <laughs> a Dennis Quaid I can't, movie. I can't think of the name of that one was though. I think it was, was the it, rookie was the as well. Was it? Yeah, I think that's what I'm confusing it with. Yeah, there was like oh. five or six rookie movies on yeah. IMDb. And a rookie TV show starring none other than the one and the only Nathan Fillion. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it's the one where he's like a, you know, 50 year old cop. Oh, that's right. Derp, 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 derp. Yeah. Yes, but... I'm waiting okay. for Tom to segue me. Oh, right. that's right. But, I mean, <laughs> we'll talk more about this great list of mine in a bit. But, Josh, what's your list number one going to look like? My list number one. Um, As usual, I like to uh, slowly build up to my best list. But uh, I call this list, You're Not Supposed to Be Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. So we we take William Hootkins from Raiders of the Lost Ark to The Island of Dr. Moreau, oh. the 1996 film starring Val Kilmer. Oh, and God. Keep like, going. Yes. You're not supposed to be here. These crazy, weird, muta mutant creatures. You're not supposed to be here. That movie is not supposed to be here. Yes. But, <laughs> but fucking get in. Yes. One of those creepy looking monsters, I think I haven't seen it, is uh, Ron Perlman. So we will be taking Ron Perlman to Pacific Rim, Ew. where the giant rift at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean is not supposed to be there. You gross. Oh, shut up. That's a good movie. It's a fun movie. But from Pacific Rim, really no comment from you, Dan? What? I... I don't hate Pacific Rim. I don't no, like just it. Saying, but I don't hate it either. Either. I didn't get anything out of you on oh. that one. He's being polite. I'm, I'm still also. I'm, I'm still like kind of in shock that we may that there's a you know a chance we go with a list that has the island of Doctor Moreau. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like Fair. mentally stealing myself for that. But anywho, from Pacific Rim, we follow Clifton Collins Jr. to 1992's Fortress. Oh, I've heard of this film. I don't recall ever seeing it. It stars Christopher Lambert, where he's married and has a kid in prison. You know, they're not supposed to be there. <laughs> but from Fortress, we follow one Vernon Wells to what some people argue as the greatest sequel of all time. Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. Ooh. Josh. Where Max is the guy who's not supposed to be there. I don't know. I've never seen that movie, so I'm just assuming that it fits with the theme. It kind of does, actually. Mm, mm, well, it fits more with hit Thunderdome, the whole not supposed to be there. But definitely Road Warrior is a very good film. That's <laughs> one of those ones that I've, like, Cool Hand Luke, I've always wanted to watch, but I've never gone around to it. But uh, from Road Warrior, we follow Mel Gibson to the 1992 film Forever Young. Yes, this would be the, uh, if, if the Island of Dr. Moreau isn't the low spot, it might be this one. But this is the one where he is frozen from World War II to like the mid 90 or the early 90s because he's not supposed to be there because and, he's been frozen for 60 years. Basically Captain America Nick, minus the super soldier. Ah, damn it. You already beat me to it. Damn it. I was going to say Nick Fury was there. It's like, we need talk about the avengers initiative yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it's basically captain america without the su super soldier serum yeah th th i like that movie because of that sci-fi twist because he just basically gets forgotten about it's like idiocracy stole that uh idea but made it different anywho Better. we follow joe morton from forever young to terminator 2 judgment day not terrible for a starter forever young definitely came out of nowhere i'm gonna say yeah that's Oh, that's more like a romance drama film, but yeah, a little bit of one. Yeah, that's why I said it's like it fits the theme. There's all there's, a, there's only a handful of movies that linked Mad okay, Max. Okay, so Terminator what are to. what are what are the movies on that list you haven't seen? Not counting the Destination. I know we've all seen the Destination, so don't count that. 
On that list, I've seen Pacific Rim, Forever Young, and Terminator 2. So Island of Dr. Moreau, Fortress, and Mad Max 2. I haven't seen those. Nice. Yeah. See, I, I have seen Pacific Rim, obviously, and Mad Max 2. I think I've seen a little bit of Forever Young and like a half a minute of Fortress. Uh, starting with Island of Dr. Moreau, though, Josh. Ballsy move. Yeah. That's uh that movie is I've never seen it, but I've read so much about it. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback because of the absolute disaster of trivia that I had regarding um, <laughs> Tango and Cash. I'm going to I'm going to need my own segment for the island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Jesus, man, that movie. Holy shit. Come on. The worst mm-hmm. movies make the best episodes. Oh, God. Yeah, it'll be a great episode to record if we went with this list. But that movie. Oh, oh man. Oh, man, we're going to be like Ronald Lacey. Our faces are going to melt like like his did in Raiders. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, thank you for getting this one out of the way early, Josh. I mean, you start with Island of Dr. Moreau, and you really can't get much worse than that. For reference, it's a 4.5 on IMDb. 4.6. Actually, it might not be the lowest film we've ever watched, but it's up there. Down there. Down whatever. <laughs> it's a climb is essentially what it is so it feels uphill but okay but uh since you guys are in reverence of mine i guess i'll go ahead and just say dan do you want to present your first list yes i will present my first list now i actually had quite a few lists it was kind of hard for me to narrow them down to three but i think i've got a pretty good one here i'm gonna i call this one across the dimensions so across the dimensions we take ronald lacy from raiders of the lost ark and we go to buckaroo bonsai in the eighth dimension that's right, he is in that one. Yep. Yeah. And from Buckaroo, we take Clancy Brown to Highlander. <gasps> nice. <laughs> Excuse me. So from Highlander, we take Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, that almost hurts. <laughs> Ouch. I love that movie, but it's so bad. I know, I know, but that's one I wanted to do with you guys, like, pretty much since we started this podcast. I've just never found a list that took me to any of the actors that were in it. So, yeah, Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat. From Mortal Kombat, we take Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa, or Tagao, to The Art of War. From the one Is that the 90s? Yeah, it's like a 90s action film with, uh, uh, not Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, Wesley Snipes. Yes. Well, how do you get those two mixed up, Dan? They look exactly nothing alike. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, was that the one that he did right before he got uh, basically arrested by the IRS? I'm not. I don't know the story behind it. I just know I've never seen it. Um, I think I have. Now but, you mention it. Um, but yeah, it's Wesley Snipes in The Art of War. Uh, from The Art of War, we take Michael Bean to Aliens. Oh. Uh... And from Aliens, we take Jeanette Goldstein to Terminator 2. Very nice. Oh, man, this is a hard one. You know, you're supposed to start with your least best, Dan, and then go to your best. That actually is. Oh, dear God. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, Okay, what of these have you not seen, my friend? Uh, I've never seen Buckaroo Banzai. I've not seen The Art of War. Solid. It's Solid. been ages since I've seen Highlander and Aliens too. I've but I've seen them, but I've, it's been in. I but it's been ages since I've seen them. Mortal Kombat I actually just recently watched because the uh, new movie came out a couple of months back. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. What about you, Josh? Oh, that's a good move. That's a good list. That's a really good list. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I haven't seen Highlander in a dog's age either. I am not keen on Buckaroo Banzai. I've never heard of it. I have no idea what to expect. But based off the name alone, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to. It's got Terminator. It's not not Terminator. It's got Robocop in it. Peter Weller's in that movie. Yeah, it's just uh, I'm judging it by the name alone. I have no idea about that one, but it does not sound like something I would pick up. I will shoot you the trailer to it, although I don't think that's going to help you at all. My friend at work describes the movie as 80s head fuck. And that's just like, okay, I got to see this movie now. So. Oh, yes. Yes. It's. So it isn't a. uh... (laughs) Sorry, I don't know why, but I have like a children's like Muppet thing in my head when I think of that. (laughs) No, this movie is not for kids. It's got (laughs) Jeff Goldblum. Sexy Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Hey, what are you talking about? 
Jeff Goldblum is sexy in every movie he does. Yeah, he only has one gear, Tom. Okay. Okay, you have a fair point, but he gets to be a sexy sax man in this one. Mm-hmm. I think. I can't remember. It's been a while. It's definitely an interesting film. Trust me, Josh, you won't hate it. <sighs> okay. Outright. Okay, so honestly, I didn't expect you guys to love this list as much as you did. But yeah, this is actually my weakest one. Oh, that's... It's a good list, but it's not as good as my best list. Okay, well, let's hear your best list, Josh. Come on, back up to you. Are we going? Yeah, that's right. We're going to reverse. Are we going right back up to me? No, it's it's Tom's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Tom goes first. My bad. So, yes, (laughs) Tom. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Now I'm not so sure about the rest of my list. Dan. (laughs) Dan, we talked about this. You won the last one. You can coast. I I can't. It's my birthday month, and I, I, I no no I'm not oh, I'm not coasting man. on this one. All the right, well, I'm sure is good, but in the end, you know, you're gonna go with my list. Just, well, we'll we'll see about go ahead, that. Tom. Go ahead, um, Tom. <laughs> okay, so list number two is called "Not Who They Seem," and the theme is the things and people in this or creatures in some cases in these movies, are not who they seem. So we'll start with Karen Allen into the Jeff Bridges film, Starman. Nice. Yes, where nice. Jeff, Bridges is, Jeff Bridges is an alien, not who he seems. And then we take Jeff Bridges into a film I didn't realize he was in, K-Pax. Oh, yeah, he's in that one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Terrible movie, but yeah, he's in it. Never seen. I liked K-Pax. And it, uh, Kevin Spacey plays a man who says he's an alien, and he may be, he may not be. It's, you know, you try to solve that mystery with everyone else, but we take Kevin Spacey from K-Pax to find Kaiser Sose in The Usual Suspects. That's one I've always wanted to see. It is such a good film. But unfortunately, from that film... We take um, Pete Postolite into Dragonheart, the film where the dragon teams up. Um, the dragon is voiced by Sean Connery and teams yep. up with Dude Man um, to fleece people. I've never seen that film, but I've heard nothing but terrible things. I liked it as a kid. As an adult, it's garbage. Yeah, well, great to know because I'm seeing it as an adult if we pick this. But at least we followed it up with Brian Thompson in Alien Nation, and then Earl Bone in Terminator 2. So I will plunk that one into the Shagrav. And again, of those, this is another one where actually, K- okay, uh, usual suspects I've seen, K packs I've seen, the rest I have not. Well, with the exception of Terminator 2, obviously. I've always wanted to see Starman. I hear good things about it. Dragonheart, that's going to be... Well, that's not even a What's in the Box film. I didn't have any What's in the Boxes in this one. But I know that what's in that box, and it is a severed head. I just have never seen the <laughs> severed head, so I'm kind of curious. And you have Kevin Spacey. And you have Kevin Spacey. He's the guy who put the head in the box, remember? That's right. You're right, Josh. So technically... I have a head in the box adjacent film with the usual suspects. But Josh, you said you've never seen the usual suspects. I have not. It's another one of those ones. It's just like, I've always, I, I know the twist. So it's like, I don't, I don't care to watch it. Uh, <laughs> damn you, but it's damn you internet. Yeah. Well, but Josh, what's list number two for you? List number two. Uh, I was kind of tossing around a single word to change around in my title, but I think I've gone with this one. This, this list is called, Yeah, let's divert the apocalypse, guys. (laughs) Divert the apocalypse. (laughs) Okay. Yes. So, all of these uh, movies involve the apocalypse in one way, shape, or form. I almost called this list something, something apocalypse, or yeah, let's watch the apocalypse, guys. (laughs) That would have been a good one, too. Yeah. But with the exception of one movie, Divert works well. So that's why I decided to go with that one. So from Raiders of the Lost Ark, we follow Bill Rembold to The Fifth Element. Oh. I think most people know about the multi-pass movie in that, that one with uh, Bruce Willis and uh, who's the, the girl? Mil- Mila jo- Jovovich. But yeah, and uh, Gary Oldman, the bad guy. But from The Fifth Element, we follow Bruce Willis to Twelve Monkeys. Oh, 
the time travel movie where they're trying to go back in time to avert the apocalypse. I think I've never seen it. That's one of the movies I haven't seen on this list. But from 12 Monkeys, we follow Simon Jones to 2005's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nice. Where they are trying to divert the end of the world. Or another word for that, the apocalypse. But from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, we follow John Malkovich to the 2018 Netflix movie Bird Box. Did that, one get, where... did that get a theatrical release? No, it's a Netflix film. Uh oh. Yes. Josh no? is, might be disqualified for not being theatrically released. We've had movies that weren't necessarily released in theaters, but this was like, I know this was 18. Does that disqualify it? I figured that wouldn't disqualify it. It was a highly produ- production movie. I, I'll give it a pass. It's not like, uh, it's, not like it's a uh, made for TV movie. I'll give it a pass, but it's a shitty film. I've I'll never give seen it. A pass it. Oh. too, but yeah, normally in the unless it gets a theatrical release at some point, it's generally disqualified. Otherwise, we could be doing weird ass t- made for TV movies here and there. So, no. but again, if anything, yeah. this will solidify a rule for selection section eleven. Those in the audience, let us know in the comments on Discord, Facebook, or whatever how you feel about the rule. But again, Bird Box, I'm allowing it. Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but anyway, from Bird Box, we follow B.D. Wong to 1996 movie Executive Decision. Oh, my God. Yeah, the one where S- Steven Seagal was heavily marketed and died five minutes in. Yes. Yes. But uh, from Executive Decision, we follow Joe Morton to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Well, apologies for derailing the discussion of your list like that, Josh. But all in all, it's a solid one. Uh, what ones have you not seen? Um, Bird Box and 12 Monkeys. Okay. I thought you hadn't seen Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, I saw that. I've seen that oh. a couple times. Uh, Nigel, what about you? Um, anything on here that's new to you? Um, I've No, I've actually seen all the movies on Josh's list. Ah. 12 Monkeys, Fifth Element, Hitchhiker's Guide, Bird Box, Executive Decision. Ter- yeah, I've seen them all. Ah, see, I have not seen bird box but yeah everything else on that list i've seen so um i'm again it's an interesting list don't get me wrong and i do want you to see 12 monkeys because that's a really good film um i think you might like it i think you might like it i think my dad rented it at one point and i saw part of it and i was just not interested it is a terry gilliam film and his are a little um eclectic but nah, no i again If we went with this, I wouldn't be hurting. Well, that's my list. So, Nigel, what's your second list? I think it's back up to me. No. No, No. yeah, you're right. Derp, derp, derp. I'm hurting. Well, you guys are just... Josh, Tom just just doesn't want me to go again because my first list was such a banger that he doesn't want to hear the other ones because I consider that one my weakest. Okay. My second list, um, I call this one Mount Rushmore because it contains basically... Most of the action stars that you would put on a Mount Rushmore of action movies. Go on. Okay. From Raiders of the Lost Ark, we take Ronald Lacey to Firefox. Yes. From Firefox, we take Clint Eastwood to The Rookie. <laughs> this list is sounding familiar already. Oh, here's where it differs. From The Rookie, we take Raul Julia to Street Fighter. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> From Street Fighter, we take Jean-Claude Van Damme to Universal Soldier. From Universal Soldier, we take Dolph Lundgren to, you can use any Expendables film, but I picked two because it's the only one I haven't seen. Uh, And then from Expendables 2, we take Arnold to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. He's the Arnold, the one and only Arnold, remember? Oh yeah, the Arnold, the one and only Arnold to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Not bad. And you said you had not seen Expendables 2? Yeah, it's the only Expendables. I don't think I've seen, yeah, because 2 is the one with Sean Claude Van Damme is the bad guy, I think. Because I think three is the one with Mel Gibson's the bad guy. And I've seen that one. See, and I, I've seen the first one. So, But again, as you said, they're all fairly interchangeable. Well, yeah, they're interchangeable because... Yeah, they're these bad guys and I'm just like, those were different movies? <laughs> yeah, and I know. I know. It's, it, I just need Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> but Dolph Lundgren <laughs> has to be in a movie with Arnold. And he's in all three... Uh, they're, both of them are in all three of the Expendables films, so you can we can pick whichever one. We start playing five, and no one notices the difference. There's only three. <laughs> so. 
All right. So what else haven't you seen on this list? Um, I've never seen the rookie or Firefox. And I've, I've not seen it. If we go with Expendables 2, I've never seen Expendables 2. Right. See, what about you, Josh? Any? Um... It's like, uh, that's a good list. Yeah. Um, never in seventeen seen the first two films. I remember absolutely loathing Street Fighter. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's I'm not like, going to remotely yeah. try to talk that movie up. The only thing no. that's awesome about that film is Raul Julia dying of cancer, giving the absolute fucking performance of his life so his grandkids can watch a movie that he was in. I remember wanting really bad to watch Universal Soldier. Did I watch it all the way through? I don't remember. That came out in, like, what, 91, 92? Something like that. It had a but few yeah. sequels, too. I remember that. Yeah, but John claudes in only in only if he's only in one of the sequels. Wasn't it wasn't uh, Stone Cold in this one? In no, like Goldberg two? was in like the return. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, Goldberg was in Universal Soldier, the return. Yeah, but um, there was actually two more made in between those two that Jean Claude is not in. Yeah, you should call this the like B Rushmore because it just it seems it seems like these are all the 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 B movies that. Like you either got like the the headliners and diapers, or John Claude Van Damme was never quite up to par with Arnold or Sly. Oh no, I'm I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> but he'd probably like, be I, like he'd probably be like up there though. I would I would put him up there. Like he's definitely up there, but definitely not on their level. Oh God, no! I would no one <laughs> no one would make that argument. But uh, no, it's good list, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Uh, Street Fighter would be. The hard one to get through. Oh, yeah. Expendables. But, but it would I be a great episode. Yeah, I think that your uh, Across the Dimensions is a better list if I was oh, to rank them. Yeah, yeah. No, hands down, Across the Dimensions is kicking ass and taking names in this competition. But yeah, I'd be I've never seen Universal Soldier. So I'm curious about that one and the rookie as as well. So I oh, and Firefox. Duh. So well, not bad for list number two. Cool. Like I said, I haven't I, even got to my best one yet. Oh, I hate to disappoint you, but I think you can retire early because I'm about to sock it to you with the winning list. This is Tom List 3, or T3, as I'm liking to call it at this moment. And List you really, three, really should have saved that, that for T2, because T3 suck. Oh, damn it, Josh. <laughs> This list I'm calling The Future is Now, Old Man. <laughs> and this, it this, this is going to be interesting. Yes. It deals with the future and future-like elements. We start off, of course, with Ronald Lacey in Firefox, because I really want to see that movie. <laughs> um, then we take Freddie Jones into Dune. Oh, Yes, and in Dune was Brad Dourif in Death Machine. And here comes the What's in the Box film. If Death Machine wasn't What's in the Box enough, William Hootkins in The Omega Code. Oof. From The Omega Code, we take Michael Ironside into Total Recall. And then we take from Total Recall the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger into Terminator 2. It's a good list. Oh, you really? Some some very solid movies and some very not solid movies. I'm thinking of uh, episode potential out of some of these movies you got <laughs> on these lists you guys are presenting. And oh yeah, some of them I did pick based yeah. on that the deal. Omega Code. Oh, if that's the movie I'm thinking of, no. Let me, I will give you the description of this because it sounds as bad as you think it is. It stars um, Casper Van Dien. Michael yes, Lee. oh my God, that is the, oh, it's so, yeah. that's one of those fucking like Christian movies, dude. A rabbi in Jerusalem develops software that can unlock prophecies in the Torah. He's murdered. Yeah, in the that is soul. such a oh. bad. That's not. I've seen oh. that movie. It's oh. dude. It's seriously. It's one of those. Like at one point, Casper Van Dien is saved, and then the evil spirits are cast away from him. Oh God, oh. I'd rather watch fucking Kirk Cameron saves Christmas. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So that's. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that one out. I mean, you got some good movies around it, but because of the Omega Code, I'm gonna be like, that's a no. Damn it! I thought <laughs> I was. I had never heard of this film. Until I looked this up, I'm like, oh my god. 
This no, ha- remember, remember when we were watching Starship Troopers, and I said that at one point I really liked Casper Van Dien, and I was really into Casper Van Dien films for like two films. You are aware like that Starship s- Troopers is like the only good movie he made, right? Oh, if you'd let me finish my story, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I would. That was the punchline, Dan. <laughs> it's like I watched like two or three movies that he was in, and I'm like, he's he's not a good actor. Starship Troopers was an anomaly because well, is- like that was one of those movies I watched, and I'm like. Oh my God, this is crap. <laughs> Which is weird because there's so many other actors in this who are good. Michael York is in this film. Michael Ironside, William Hootkins. Some of these people I recognize. Yeah, that's 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 going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> right off the bat. Wow. <laughs> I was doing so well until the Omega Code. Well, and- I think like when you said the Omega Code, I think I started thinking the Omega Man. Oh, I wish. I tried yeah. so hard to find the Omega Man. And like, um, I really wanted to get, um, I didn't um, click, it didn't click for me until you said Casper Van Dien. I'm like, oh shit. (laughs) Yeah, no, actually I was trying to get, um, oh, now I can't remember the, um, Logan's run. I was really trying to get Logan's run because, uh, Michael York is in Logan's run, but I couldn't go from there into anything good. So, uh, Mm. yeah, alas, alas. Beyond that one movie. Like Beyond that's one of those few ones. It's like that wouldn't even make a good episode. That's just sorry. No, that's. I, I, I hate to nick such a thing based off one movie, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that and, I, and 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 Dune, just Dune. Like I don't know. My dad loves Dune, so uh, I think I would be curious to watch it because of his interest in it. Uh, it would be. It would be. I would especially be that Dune. would be. Dune would be good too, especially considering the new Dune is coming out. Mm-hmm. I. Dune is to me what uh, the John Wayne version of um, True Grit we True got Grit you. was to you. Like it would just be one <laughs> that I'm just gonna have a really hard time getting through. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, I hate yeah. that film with a passion. Almost all of these films on this list, with the exception of Death Machine and the majority of Total Recall, I have not seen. So I have seen Death Machine, and that was that's why that was not a head in the box for me. I know what we're <laughs> going to be getting into if we had picked this list, but it doesn't sound like it because everyone else knows what's in the Omega Code. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Josh, now that you've killed any chance of me winning this competition. <laughs> I love that Tom's like, this is my best list. And Josh and I are like shitting all over it. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, sir. This is not the winner. <laughs> all right this is like this is like that uh like that that netflix cooking show nailed it whenever like they're supposed to have this like really really elaborate and artsy thing they're supposed yeah. to mimic and then they come out with like looks like they shat on the table and they're all proud of it that yeah. was tom there, there, or like uh any any episode of kitchen nightmares where like the chef goes gordon ramsay's gonna love my food he's gonna be blown away by my food the food is not the problem at this restaurant and the first thing gordon ramsay starts spitting out the food as he's tasting it he's like oh god what this is disgusting <laughs> this is awful <laughs> was, was this the wine episode of kitchen nightmare where he vomited into a bucket is this, is this <laughs> wow thanks guys like, yeah like tom sounds like this is my winning list this is my strongest list and josh and i'm like no sir you put that right <laughs> back where you found it because we are not doing that <laughs> Fire Pit Podcast with Josh, Dan, and Rob. <laughs> Josh, put me out of my misery. Go on. <laughs> All right. So my final list, I, I felt felt like some of these movies would be like awesome because, but you guys have pretty much shown all the, like what I considered some of the big ones that I was looking forward to showing this list. But I, I think this is a solid, this is my best list, but I call this one the, we must stop the unstoppable blank. <laughs> okay. So, we follow William Hootkins to where we must stop the unstoppable, thank you for ruining my surprise, death machine. (laughs) Okay, it's still on a list. All right, all right. (laughs) But from death machine, because seriously, that is is a what's in the box for me. That just looks... Fun story about that one is this cover scared me. I never rented it, and I never wanted to watch it as a kid because it was like what it was like soup, those claw things with blood dripping off of it. So as a kid, I was like, I don't want to watch that movie. I don't even want to look at the box. Now you have a chance to see inside the box. Yes, <laughs> yes. But from Death Machine, we follow Martin McDougal, where we must stop the unstoppable aliens of Edge of Tomorrow. 
That's the Tom Cruise time, time repeat film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Groundhog Day with guns. Yeah, and aliens. <laughs> yeah. But um, from Edge of Tomorrow, we follow one Bill Paxton, where we must stop the unstoppable aliens in Aliens. Aliens. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was on my first yeah. list, too. So I said you guys showed some of the big names in my list. So we watch Aliens, the sequel to uh, Alien. The action-packed James Cameron one. But we follow Lance Hendrickson. And this is kind of a what's-in-the-box movie. But at the same time, I think Tom will really enjoy it and me and Dan are going to hate it. Because it almost looks like a Wes Anderson film, at least by the trailer. But it's called The Arcadian. I don't... Never heard of this. No, me neither. It was released in 2011. It looks different. I watched the trailer to it. The Arcadian. A-R-C-A-D-I-A-N. A R C A D I A R K A R C A D I A N. Okay. Came okay. out in 2011. This is kind of a. This looks like it could be trippy. Ooh, it I'm, got kind of an interesting color palette. Reminded me of Wes Anderson, Decker, but it's not Wes Anderson. Yeah, Decker Dreyer. That director sounds familiar. Mm. Nope, I don't know any of his films. Okay, yeah, I, I just took a peek at it in um, IMDb. The cover definitely has my curiosity, Josh. Continue, yeah, though. But from the Arcadian, we follow one Brian Thompson to 1984's The Terminator. Interesting. And then from The Terminator, we can follow either one Arnold Schwarzenegger or Linda Hamilton to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I just like the idea, the possibility of doing both films back to back because we have not done a se- or original and its sequel. So we're going from Aliens, the Arcadian, to Terminator, and then in, and topping it off the last two weeks with the, the only two good Terminator movies. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but at the same time, it is kind of fitting. Hmm. Is there a possible film that we could audible in its place? Why, are you thinking that uh, Terminator could be a destination film down the road? Yeah, that's what, that's the only, like... I mean, it's not going to stop me from loving this list because of- see, that's I, I I gave that consideration too, mm-hmm. um, because I agree. I think Terminator would be a good uh, um, destination film, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I told myself a while back that I'm not going to take movies out of consideration just because they might make a good destination film. No, well, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's and just- I thought that like the duology of this, like it's something that we haven't done, and we could. It would be awesome too because then we could compare and contrast them. Um, as we're watching like the first one, we could talk about that one and see the yeah. difference. I honestly would grew. argue on the side that Terminator 2 is still more of a destination film than The Terminator. The Terminator yeah. was slightly a lower budgeter film and it was a mega hit. There's no two ways around it. But Terminator 2 is like the very yeah. definition of like sequel escalation. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I've it was a bigger right. hit. Like Terminator 2 was also a bigger hit. It's also more fondly remembered than The Terminator. OK. And mm-hmm. again, I'm not going to foo foo this list because of that. Um yeah, Nigel, it sounds like you're okay with it, too. So just because we haven't done it before doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. Yes. All right. All right. Um, yes, I think my Across the Dimensions list, that's probably one of my favorites, but I didn't think it was my strongest. I think this is my strongest. Speaking of sequel escalations, this list is called Cameron Escalations. <laughs> oh, no. What are you doing, Nigel? It starts off the same as my last list. Uh, we start off with Ronald Lacey to Firefox. Or taking Ronald Lacey from Raiders going to Firefox. Mm-hmm. Then we take Clint Eastwood to The Rookie. We really want to see that rookie. Yeah. And from The Rookie, we take Tom Skerritt to Alien, the original. Okay. Now here's where it gets into Cameron's sequel escalations. From Alien, we take Sigourney Weaver to Aliens. That's why he's okay with going and to From Terminator. Aliens, we take Michael Bean to The Terminator. And from the Terminator, we take Linda Hamilton or Arnold Schwarzenegger to Terminator 2. Damn. Damn. That's just cheating. Well, it's not. Also, the one other reason why I went with this list, Terminator 2 was like the summer film, the summer action movie. And that's what this list is. This, these, this list is all like summer action films. Or, well, in the case of Alien, it's a horror film. But yeah. Damn. Damn. So Josh, he saw your Terminator to Terminator 2. He's like, I have to agree with this. I have to say this is a good idea. (laughs) Royal flush. All aces. 
Don't ask me how I did it. <laughs> That's almost cheating. That's unfair. It's not unfair. But which films on there have you not seen? It's like the first two, I guess. Duh, Josh. Yeah, I have not yeah. seen um, Firefox or The Rookie. And I've never seen Aliens or Alien or... <laughs> bullshitting. I've seen those movies a thousand times. But... Actually, no, I've, I've only seen Alien like once or... No, I've seen Alien like two or three times. Aliens is the one I've, I watched it so much as a kid that I can... I know every line. But um, going back now, I think Alien, you can make an argument that that one's the better film. But still. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I Tom, have, you've never seen Alien, have you? You've never seen I the original. Or Aliens. I have never seen Alien or Aliens. So four mm. out of these six, I have not seen. You both have done a pretty darn good job. Nigel, with the exception of Mount Rushmore... And Josh, your Let's Divert the Apocalypse, almost all of your other lists I haven't seen much of. Actually, I take that back. Dan, I've seen Buckaroo, Highlander, and Mortal Kombat um, from your first list. But uh, the rest are pretty solid. So you've all got my curiosity. Man, that last list of yours, Nigel. Wow. Just come out with a haymaker. I'm telling you guys, I'm, I came here to win. I'm not sloughing this one off. He's not kidding. It is his birthday list. Uh, Josh, what are your... Th I mean... Josh is well, going what? on mute so he can swear. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I, it's a good list. I, I think I prefer my unstoppable blank list, Bo. I mean, also it's a good list. Don't get me wrong. I, I but I think uh, the un I, 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 if I had to choose between the two, but we're not even at that point yet. Yeah, so. yeah we still got to whittle it down here. We um, <clears throat> got a lot of selecting to do, so uh, let's get selecting. To yet another selectional episodal episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and chief cyberneticist, Tom. Oh, the wrist bones connected to the hand bones. The hand bones connected to the machine gun. The machine guns mowing down the humans, and that's the apocalypse. But thank you for braving what feels like the apocalypse right now. Whew, it is hot out there. To be with us here at the fire pit. 10 out of 10, we're back at it again with the latest model of our selection section series. Selection section number 10. We've raided the Lost Ark with Indiana Jones, but now we have to avert our dark fate with Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Is there no fate but what we make? Well, we just have to make it first to find out. And if you want to make people interested in your products and features, or if you want to make some of your thoughts known, or if you just want to make some noise with your keyboard, clickety-clackety-clickety-clackety, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as the focus of your email. Whether it's to pay for an ad, spend some time sharing your most private thoughts, deposit a destination or journey idea into our brain banks, and transfer it our way. From there, we'll read it, reprogram it, shoot it into the past to protect the leader of the human uprising, and never respond. I'm sure it'll be back. Any day now. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh, look at that! It's already trying to reach for my neck to strangle me! Oh, isn't that a... I might have made a miscalculation! I'm gonna deal with this for a while. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening. As always, good luck. <coughs> down, down, you mechanical horror beast. Down. Yeah, 
yeah. So we, we need to go through and uh, basically, um, how, how did we do it last time? We each cut one of our own or no, no, the other two picks, which one to cut? No, the first round, the first round, we choose which one we would rather cut. The second round, we each choose someone else's to cut. And then the third one, we start debating. And then when the third one, we go, we eliminate mm-hmm, to two mm-hmm. and then we debate the final two. Mm-hmm. So, so, to- so we'll start with Tom of your three lists, which is the one that you want to drop. And then we'll each get an input on which one. Yeah, that's right. We each go through and talk about which one we want to drop. I think Tom knows the answer to this question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, um, so Tom, I, of your three lists, which one do, do you uh, like the least? Uh, well, I was really happy with the future is now, old man, but now I'm not so sure. Um, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. You're right, though. I think I'm going to have to... I'm really proud of the first two lists now in retrospect. Actually, I'm going to have to drop list number two to start with, because with the exception of Starman and Alien Nation, I've either seen the films or I'm not really that interested in seeing them. Dragonheart, eh, I, I could leave it, really. Uh, Starman, I do want to see, but I'm sure we'll find a way to it. Usual suspects, we will find a way to it. And K-Pax, I've seen it once. I'm fine with it. It's not all right. Um, I do want to see Alien Nation. I I already said that, but yeah, K, you know, Starman and Alien Nation are the only two that I would really interest me. The rest are kind of meh. So yeah, I'm going to kill list number two. Yeah, I think of your three lists, I would probably choose list three. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, th- what's in the box for the Omega Code? We know it's in the box. It's a dick in the box, and I'm not one. I'm not going through it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just like no, <laughs> no. And Dune. <sighs> Oof. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not even a big fan of like the Usual Suspects, but. Uh, I'd rather watch that than Dune again. So I do want us to see Dune at some point. I know you've seen it. Nigel. I want to see it. I, I want to yeah. see it. Like I was, that was one of the high spots of your list three that I was liking. And then I realized what the Omega code was. And I'm like, I'm not watching that again. Yeah. I'd, I'd mean, I'd rather watch Dune than the Omega code. I know, I've never seen the Omega code. I know what I'm getting into with Dune, but I also know what I'm getting into with the Omega code. I'm not watching it. Yeah. Um, so how did we do this? Do we let the uh, person who lists, or I thought we, or do we do the highest? No, we go votes? with consensus. We go with consensus. So the third list is getting cut on this first round. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. We go with consensus. Okay. You survive one more round, list number two, but the future is not now, old man. Although, um, Death Machine's an interesting film. It's a bad film, but it's an interesting. Have film. you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, Danielle showed that to us um, years ago, and I think she's rather excited to hear it on lists at the moment. Yeah, I'm definitely that's what's in the box for me because it just looks so bad. I think I'm gonna love it, oh, but I don't will. think it, I don't think it's gonna be good. Oh, it's it's yeah. well, it's it's got a charm to it, Josh. I personally think. Well, I don't want to play it up because then you'll see it and be like, "Really, this is what they were hyping up." As long as it's not Blade Runner, it's. Definitely not Blade Runner, but <laughs> list number two. What, what, which one are you gonna cut now that we're talking about Blade? Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and vote for "You're Not Supposed to Be Here." Of yeah, my I can... list, I feel like that's the weakest of them. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Honestly, I'm gonna be kind of against this. Um, really, uh, even though it's got Pacific Rim on it, I thought that would like, poo poo you immediately. No, because really, I'd have to go with. Uh, divert the apocalypse as your weaker of the three. Um, Mad Max is a great film. I've never seen Fortress. Um, Forever Young, or I've never seen Island of Dr. Moreau. Forever Young is the weakest film on this list for sure. Um, now is it weak because it's a romance, or is it weak? because I thought it was a solid movie when I saw it? It's weak because it is a romance. It, the rest of these yeah. are action films. Yeah, definitely. That, that's that's why I'm voting down on that one because it kind of feels like it slows the uh, slows mm-hmm. the roll of the entire journey. It's like 
Mm-hmm. Whereas Wimbledon was a romance, it didn't. I feel like that didn't detract from the journey itself, and it was in theme. I feel yeah, like Forever the Young kind of doesn't necessarily fit the theme, mm-hmm. especially since Summer Block. We, we kind of, even though it's like we don't try to specifically say Summer Blockbuster, it's like all of these feel like they could be a Summer Blockbuster, especially in the eighties. Holy 90s. shit! I just found an Audible. Ooh. I just figured out an Audible and Josh, it's you're not supposed to be here list. Oh, what you find? What you find? Okay, take Mad Max Two: The Road Warrior. Mm-hmm. For, don't use Mel Gibson to Forever Young. Use um, uh, Vernon Wells to Commando, and then take Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando to Terminator Two. Oh, game changer! I didn't even look that up. I was just looking at. I, I was just honestly looking at Josh's list and going, "Wait a minute, who else is in The Road Warrior?" And then I was like, "Isn't the guy from the bad guy from Commando's in The Road Warrior?" Oh, and so I, if you didn't want to watch Forever Young, instead watch Commando, and Commando's definitely fits the theme of you're not supposed to be here, because remember they kidnap his daughter to force him to work for them, and he's oh. not supposed to be there. <laughs> you know, oh. he's supposed to be he's supposed to be retired from the army or the special forces or whatever he was. But yes, yes. Please, yes, Josh, it's your list. You do with it as you please, because you've got two other solid. I'm not gonna lie. Them. I will. I will sit through the island of Doctor Moreau if it means eventually I get to Commando. <laughs> I have never because honestly, like honestly, I, that's a good audible. But like that was the one thing I was telling you guys before is uh, I think one of the best skits skit potential out of these would be Pacific Rim. Well, well, you know, on the list. Yeah, yeah that, that, still be on I'm the list. I'm not taking no, I'm just saying, I'm, no, no, What I'm just saying is that's that was the movie I was telling you. I think Pacific Rim has li- really good skit potential because I mean, just imagine yeah, but, the three of us drifting and sharing memories. Okay, and how yeah, weird yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah, be. But, yeah. but you all, and also, <laughs> also, you need to think about the skit potential for Commando because Commando has contains more one liners than any Arnold movie in his entire library. Like that's where you get the whole. I promised to kill you last. And he goes, yeah, you did. He goes, I lied. And he just drops him. And then like the whole, like, please do not disturb my friend. He's dead tired. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> After he broke his neck. Yeah. Yes. Get in, sir, please. The movie that couldn't be made today because cell phones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I really want to see Commando and I want it on this list because I want to support Wait, you've never list. seen it? I have never seen Commando. Holy shit. I can't believe you've never seen Commando. I have never seen it. And it's a movie where Arnold did all his own stunts. It's like the most 80s film of the 80s. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I mean, Josh- he basically plays John Matrix. He basically, pe- uh, well, Matrix is his name in um, John Commando. Matrix, yeah. But he basically plays the protagonist from The Predator if he didn't have to fight the predator <laughs> and just had to fight and just had to fight regular mooks <laughs> because predator is just a quiet sequel to commando. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I, I, yeah, I do head canon that that's, that's the same in the same universe. Oh, I would call that. That's a better audible for me. I would be more interested in watching that list than I would with forever young. Cause I always felt that was the low point in that list. It and was. Still, I, would be, uh, still Island of Dr. Moreau and Fortress are the two films that I haven't seen in this list. And and I've never seen Fortress either. And I've always kind of been interested. Oh, wait, we can't audible this. Why? Why not? He uses Vernon Wells in Fortress, who can't use the same actress. Uh, in the same uh, uh, damn it. Oh, I was so excited, too. Oh, Boo Earns. I was hoping. All right. No, no. Well, yeah, I'm going to make it unanimous. We're going to have to cut. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah, Vernon Wells is the only connection. Yeah, that's a shame. I was really hoping. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I didn't mean to get everybody's hopes up. I forgot to use Vernon Wells in Fortress. No, we we all did. We heard him say the name like four or five times, and we still all forgot. Yeah, well, we got excited about Commando. Yes. We all wanted to see Arnold go Commando. We did. Let's be honest. Okay. Okay. Um, all right so moving on those, to oh go ahead no i was gonna say all those listeners that were ye- yelling at us that we already used um Verda wells yes yes we figured it I out i imagine you're gonna edit out quite a bit of that last bit of conversation mm, probably yeah <laughs> but all right but uh moving on to uh nigel which one of his lists nigel which one would you vote to get rid of on your three lists be rushmore yeah mm-hmm. yeah just uh i mean I do really want to see Firefox and the rookie, 
and I think Street Fighter would be an absolutely amazing episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean, I've seen Expendables one and Expendables three. I can't imagine two is that much different. Dude, Expendables seriously, 3. the only reason I remember <laughs> the any points of the plot between the, those films is that I remember I was watching Dexter shortly before, and like one of the uh, I loved like the 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 Cuban cop they had in Dexter. And I see him everywhere in other movies he's in. Um, mm-hmm. I forget what was the other show he had a bit part in. But he, like uh, Sylvester Stallone really liked Dexter. And basically the entire cast of Desk Dexter is an Expendables 1. No kidding. So, yeah. So I like, and I shortly watched, I watched Expendables 1 after finishing, or I got through like season five of Dexter before I stopped watching it. But I was just like, oh, oh, he's in it. Oh, she's in it. Oh, he's in it. So that's the only reason Expendables 1 stands out from any of the other Expendables movies. Like, you tell me that, uh, you know, um, God damn it. Now I can't think of his fucking name. God damn it. He had all of the, the martial arts guy, Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh! Chuck oh, Norris. Thank you. Oh, my God, I blanked. Dude, I, I was just like, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck what? Chuck what? Chuck Norris. Yeah, it's like, you tell me. He was in one of them. I know that. I remember the scene. I couldn't tell you which movie it was in. <laughs> I, wow, I blank on that too. Holy God. All right. Mm-hmm. But, All right. Well, ooh. first round of cuts are done. We are now down to six films. Now it comes back up to Tom. All right. This is where it gets. Yeah. We're well, just still I... doing a round of cuts. So. Yeah, but now it's you and me discuss which one of Tom's movies you would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so of my films here, which would you, which belongs in the chopping block? If it was honestly for me, I like your first list the best. Well, because it starts with like it's like forty percent your lists. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he's still allowed to have a valid opinion about it. Well, I just that, and I—I I mean, I'm looking at the second list. I'm not a big fan of the Usual Suspects. Dragonheart is meh. Uh, if I got to watch Alien Nation, I'd rather watch it with the list that's got Firefox and the Rookie on it. Uh, yeah, and I've never seen Capex, but I have no desire to see it. So yeah, Capex isn't that great. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, mm. that's why I like his first list the best. I like Capex, but yeah, if I'm going to champion any list to make it to the final round, yeah, uh, out of this world. If I remember Capex like- correctly, I've only ever seen it once. Like, I thought that it was like a meh film. I thought the story was interesting, but I just remember it being really boring. It's slow. It is a lot of... um, And then it's one of those ones that leaves you on a ambiguous like ending. And you're just like, well, what? I hate this film. So I I think I would have to like uh, mirror Dan and say list two would be my vote. Yeah. If I want any list to make it to the final round since uh, my third list uh, died posthumously. um, Yeah. I'm I'm going to have to... Yeah, it's uh, out of this world. I also want to see make it to the final round. Wow, this is not turning out so good for me. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought I'd be a contender this time. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, so now I get to help murder one of Josh's lists. Here comes Catharsis. All right. So what do we have left of, yeah, of Josh? I know of my two lists. I really want to champion We Must Stop the Unstoppable Blank. That's the one I want to go with. And I actually think that's a slightly better list than, yeah, let's divert the apocalypse, guys. Like, I like, I, yes, the, the apocalypse list. I think all the movies on there are good, but I just, I love the cadence of my, uh, the unstoppable I, Yeah, I blank mean, one. for me personally, I've seen every movie on your let's divert the apocalypse, guys, and I like exactly one of them. I like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I do not see the big, I don't understand why the fifth element has the following it has. I recognize that I'm wrong. And that, or I'm in the minority that uh, everyone else loves that movie. I don't. Never understood what the big deal about it was. 12 Monkeys is okay. Um, executive Decision is kind of <laughs> boring. Yes. It's but kind it is of boring. A like, yeah, but they advertise it as like Die Hard on a plane, but it's like not. Very much not, yeah. Well, well um, Steven Seagal did Die Hard. Yeah, right. but I mean, like, it would have been a better film if, like, it just showed people on an airplane watching Die Hard while they were on a flight. Wasn't then that Die Hard like... 2? <laughs> that would have been <laughs> a better saying. film than just... Die Hard 2, yeah. But that, that's just me personally. I, I do think your unstoppable blank yeah. list is better. Yeah, I'm going to make this unanimous. Wow, we're almost all on the same page this time around. Yeah. 
All right, coming to Dan's list. Oof, I really don't know. It's like, I know you love your Cameron Escalation list, but I almost like your Across the Dimensions list. This, I'm, like, I do. I will say, if I'm going to champion one of my lists, as much as I love the Cameron Escalation list, and I love the movies on that list, uh, I've seen all of them multiple times, with the exception of Firefox and The Rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I really want to see Buckaroo Banzai. And... I think the across the dimensions list would be kind of more in theme with what we're trying to do to get to Terminator 2. And this is where I'm kind of in agreement because I love the Cameron escalation, but that's back to back, you know, a movie and its sequel movie and its mm-hmm. sequel. And it's, it's, it, it really cuts the, di- I feel like it kind of cuts the diversity down just a little bit. Because yeah. You guys aren't wrong. I mean, I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. That's an awesome list. And I'm, mm-hmm. You guys remember when I texted you guys last week and said, I've got the list. We're yeah. done. Pencils down. This yeah. wasn't the one. My Cameron Escalation was not the one where I thought this would be. Oh, the so one I was going I based off of your, that's your one in the pocket. Like your, you go your worst list first and your best list last. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, oh, but so, so you did start with the best list first. Oh, yeah. you cheeky monkey. No wonder it was so damn good. Oh my God. And again, I have never, I have not seen Alien or Aliens. And so like four out of your six films in Cameron Escalation would be a winner for me, but it sounds like it'd be rote for you guys. Well, I I won't cry if we choose it. I mean, like I said, I love all these films and I would love to watch Alien with you guys. I think that's such a good film Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. compared. Now, the, the sequel Aliens is also, I think, just as good a movie. But Alien is so much different. It's kind of like oh, the Terminator yeah. to the rest of the franchise. Like the Terminator is such a different film from what the franchise eventually evolved into. Mm-hmm. And same with like Alien. Alien is such a different film from what the fr- Alien franchise eventually evolved into. I would love to do that film someday. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely want to watch Alien because especially Alien and Aliens. Oh, they are so, so different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that almost follows the Terminator uh philosophy too where it's like those two films are really good and then every sequel after that sucked yes yeah yeah because yeah. those, those are movies that said something if anything else the mm-hmm. other ones are just saying hey we're aliens too right guys yeah but those are so different like terminator one and two felt more organic like there was better flow between the two but alien and aliens is just like Okay, they have alien, the same kind of alien in them, but these are almost totally different movies. Yeah, and I, I do remember. Well, I mean, I wasn't, I was still really young when Aliens came out, but I, I, people talk about like you know they back then they talked about when they were making this film like, well, if they're going to use a bunch of space marines with really awesome big guns and all that, how are the aliens still going to be scary? Because you know, part of the horror in the first movie is that they're alone on that spaceship with no weapons, and that's why the alien is so deadly and so scary. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, now that you put a bunch of space marines you know, with a bunch of uh, big guns uh, against these aliens. How are they still going to be scary? And James Cameron found a way to still yes. make those fucking things frightening as hell, despite mm-hmm. the fact that there's oh. a platoon full of badass Marines all over the planet. Yeah, that yes. scene when they look up into the, uh, the between the plenum and the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I think I shat myself. Oh, when I saw that. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so good. Such yeah, a good film. That's... But if we wanted to watch it, it's on my Across the Dimensions list. So... That's mm-hmm. why I, I, you know. So okay, I'm I'm kind of glad we're all in agreement about um, Cameron Escalation um, not making the cut and going with across the dimensions because yeah, I do like. So we are all voting for uh, dimensions. Cameron Escalation. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, cause that one's almost the the try hard list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. It's a solid damn list. It I'm is. So- it is. I, I want to watch every one of those movies on this podcast with you guys. And That's I think well, I think those every one of those films is a, it's not like this isn't a case of these we're never going to get to these movies. I think mm-hmm. some of these films we can get to. Firefox does have Clint Eastwood in it. The Rookie's got Clint Eastwood and uh, Martin or not Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen and Raul Julia and Tom Skerritt. So it's like you know we'll get to some of those films. I think yeah. we'll be okay. What's I mean, the Rookie about again? It's a cop thinking, film. It's a buddy a cop, cop film. film. Okay. Yep, it's a, I kept thinking it's, it's a baseball film, but well, I know it's not the Dennis Quaid rookie movie. <laughs> no, it's um, it's not really a buddy. Well, it, it, it's a buddy cop film, but it's not the lethal weapon formula like Tango and Cash was. It's the old veteran cop and the rookie cop. 
Uh, um, so yeah, Clint Eastwood's the old gruffy veteran, obviously, because that's all he plays. And uh, Charlie Sheen is the new hotshot rookie. So gotcha. that, he gets, that he gets partnered with. And Raul Julia is, I think, the drug dealer or the. What, drug what year did that come out? Nineteen ninety-two, uh, I think. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, ninety-two. Oh no, nineteen ninety. 1990. Okay, I'm yeah, taking a exactly. Terminator 2. Terminator 2 came out in 1992. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this is one that Danielle, our friend, was talking about. It's like, oh my god, you guys need to see this film. Raul Julia just eats all the scenery and leaves nothing for anyone else. Which is exactly what he does in Street Fighter 2. But then again... Mm. Sounds like no it's a running else... trend. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Raul Julia was a theater, classically trained actor, kind of like Patrick Stewart. And therefore... When he acts, he acts, <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. 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 It's, it's great, though. His good films are never really good, but his bad films, he gives the best performances. It's weird like that. But yeah, so Nigel's Across the Dimensions makes the cut. Right, so we are, down, enough. we are now down to the top three. So now we need to cut it down to the top two. All right. I mean, you guys can vote for my list. It wins. It's um, it's out of this world. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I'll take this uh, this trophy, pos- you know, in advance now. You know, um, it. sit down. No, we are voting for his list to cut, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you both really brought the game here, but. Go ahead, Nigel. Yeah. You, you sound like you were almost going to defend me a little bit. Go on. Go on. Uh, well, it's not a bad list, though. Like, no, it's uh, not. Uh, you know, I, the original Rollerball, that's my What's in the Box movie. I mean, the, the, the remake is such a fucking disaster. I mean. Mm-hmm. That's still a roller Lord. derby movie, right? I'm not misthinking. Yeah, it, okay. it's a future sport that takes place in the future of sport, and it... Yeah, I, it, it, a lot of death and B yeah. movie death too. So yeah, um, I've never oh, seen it's a 1975 it. film. It's a 1975. I've never seen it. Like I said, the remake is a fucking disaster. Just a complete. Just Dude, yeah, film. I just saw that. Like, I, that's probably what my aversion to that list is. It's because I know of the remake. I saw the trailers and it looked like crap. And it's like I'm, I've forgotten about that until you mentioned it with your list. And now I'm sad because I remember it. I've never seen the movie, but I remember it looking that bad. The the sequel is that bad. We have watched it, so you don't have to. <laughs> the remake? Yes. Um, but the original one I've never seen, but um, what was it sitting at on IMDb? Um, it's a 6.6, which is... I think uh, mm-hmm. six point five better than the remake version, and it's not the lowest film we've ever seen on here. Again, I'm still going to defend the list a little bit because I don't want to just abandon oh. it. But I know how this story is going to end here. So, <laughs> well, um, I I like the list. Don't get me wrong, uh, but like we should honestly, I want to say make it as a joke. Like, yeah, we're just going to cut yours, especially after you stood up on the pedestal. I just kind of want to kick the chair out from under you. <laughs> sit down <laughs> sir <laughs> but we should a- we should go through and look at each of these lists subjectively because this is the next six weeks worth of movies we're watching even though it's going to feel like four days because jesus christ did we just finish raiders of the lost ark yeah 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 like, wasn't that, it just what? like three days ago we were doing selection section nine i know we're about to do our fourth destination of season two which means we only have three or two left after this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, it was like remember when we put terminator 2 down as a destination film it was like december mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and we were like man that seems like so far away and now it feels like it's gonna happen tomorrow judgment days six weeks away god just these past several months have been nuts for me but all with yeah. a nice cherry on top so that's good for me it's yeah very good we do like a cherry but again, of the lists that you two have, you both brought some really solid lists here. I love Buckaroo Banzai. I admit it's not a classically good film, but it's bizarre. And it's one of those films that since we're no longer in the 80s, that bizarreness has added to a certain charm that you mm-hmm. go back on and go. I just okay. really want to see pre-RoboCop Peter Weller. So what year did that come out? Because RoboCop was what eighty uh, six. Hold on, I have it. I still have it up on one of my. No, I don't. Okay, hold on. Nineteen eighty four. Nineteen eighty four. Yeah, it's got John Lithgow and um, 
Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd, Jeff Goldblum, John Lithgow, Ellen Barkin, who was kind of like a uh, an eighties like sex queen. Like she was a oh, one she of the, was a hotness. She was like yeah. yeah, she was a hotness in the eighties. Uh, again, it had a pretty you know solid name cast, and it stands at a six point four on IMDb. I mean, I think you you would find charm in the film, Josh. You would acknowledge it's a not a classically good film, but you probably get a good laugh out of some of the over the topness <laughs> of it. And it did inspire some Wes Anderson stuff later on down the line. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh, Back I to, um, I don't know why, but I had like a weird. Uh, oh, I think I was Big Daddy because they had that kangaroo thing in there, and I think it had a similar name, and that's why I keep thinking of big stuff like kangaroo costumed guy when you oh. say buckaroo bonsai because i think it had a similar name as a parody to that and that's what i had in my head every time you say buckaroo bonsai oh no thank god no no yeah Josh, i was just like what what is this that. movie like that you're talking about because that's not the image i have in my head so that's that's my bad <laughs> no that's fine it's essentially I, th- this is the imdb adventurer brain surgeon, rock musician, Buckaroo Banzai, and his crime-fighting team, the Hong Kong Cavaliers, must stop evil alien invaders from the eighth dimension who are planning to conquer Earth. Yes, that title is only half as bizarre as the actual film is. And John Lithgow is great in this movie. John Lithgow is great in everything he's in. Yes, but he gets to go legitimately insane. Yeah, he basically film. plays the 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 alien from Third Rock from the Sun in the movie. <laughs> He's that crazy guy, so it's awesome. Dude, John Lithgow is awesome. Yeah, that 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 sounds that sounds almost pre before I watched it. Flash Gordon levels of cheese. I would say this movie's better than Flash Gordon, though. Yeah, this one moves. That's what I'm saying. Like Flash Gordon was one of those movies for me that was just like had a very high standing until mm-hmm. I watched it. Uh, I wasn't expecting anything going into Flash Gordon. I thought I was going to hate it, and I did. I, well, I, I, well, I, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. I hated it more than I thought I was going to hate it. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I was hoping for a bad movie that I would like, kind of like Hard Ticket to Hawaii, but instead I got a bad movie that I hated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I hope that at least this one would be, if we either went with my Out of This World or Nigel's um, we must stop the un. Oh no, that's uh, across the dimensions. Excuse me. Um, you would enjoy Buckaroo Bonsai. Um, again, the rookie has come up at least once other one other time. We've had it on uh, one or other, you know, Nigel's list here a bit ago. So obviously, this one begs to be watched at some point. Yeah, and- I mean, after you guys read that, it's like now I'm definitely interested in it. Because I think before I probably would have avoided trying to find that on a list. Also, I'm uh, championing my list because I really want to do a skit where we're in a where we are somehow in a martial arts tournament to determine the fate of Earth Realm. <laughs> like how? <laughs> but still, I mean, yeah. I mean, that would not be bad either. No, no. But then again, I, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I would have to out of the three. Like Tom, I think your list is really good. But the problem is, is I haven't seen any of those movies and it's back to like when that thing i was talking about on uh when we uh the fire pit strikes out yeah similar situation it's like i am not brave enough to go into something without at least a movie that i'm familiar with no that's fair that's very fair i'm surprised you hadn't seen alien nation i figured one of you two would have seen it if only when it came by tv Mm, but, I remember it being on TV one time. I remember my dad watching it one time, but I never sat down to watch it with him. Like, I, I, but I do, remember, cause I do remember it. That's yeah, almost my story verbatim. Yeah. So, I mean, so I, I get what you're saying there. Um, for me, I have seen Buckaroo, and, but I haven't seen any other film. And we keep talking about Firefox so much. So it's for me, that was another factor in really mm-hmm. going for it but i understand that you and i have different sensibilities when it comes to movies we i do. love i know you're a lot you're braver than i <laughs> mm-hmm. and so and I, I think nigel like splits the middle there he's he cared if he wanted to but at the same time he would also like unless i'm well, assuming like, I, I i am totally okay especially watching movies i haven't seen before especially with you guys but 
Like, there's not a single movie on that list that I would be looking forward to. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know how you have those movies where it's like, okay, I don't know those two movies, but then I have this movie to look forward to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I do. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And I do if I'm, so it sounds like you're pretty a little bit the same when it comes to my list, like meh. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I do want to see the rookie and Buckaroo Banzai. Um, mm-hmm. Rollerball has me a little curious. Alienation, I can take it or leave it. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's just my opinion on it. And again, some of these will probably circle back on, and you both have made, this you won't have to hold me at gunpoint to watch any of these films. If we had gone with your yeah. third list, I'd have quit this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fire pit with Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see the guys when we get to Terminator. They fucked off for the rest of this journey. I've got Wait. something and then just hear me running and then. <laughs> yeah. See, this is also why this was my first list, because yeah. I kind of knew like they don't recognize any of these films. I can maybe get Dan with Rollerball just so we would have context to how really bad the remake was. But the rest, I know mm-hmm. it's kind of like fire. It's seriously, three. your list three would have been really good, but <laughs> not for the Omega, the Omega code. code. <laughs> I wish I could have found something else in between there. I really do. But as soon as I saw it, it's like, what's oh, funny is I think I have a list going from death machine to total recall. Like I actually, I think I generated something like that or, Cause I know total recall came up a lot in my, uh, when mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. coming up with connections. And say, if you still had one of those lists hiding there, if we could somehow audible the Omega code, but I think list three was already killed my like, in the cradle. So, um, it didn't make it this far. We can't dig it back up. Um, but honestly, all those movies, like clearly we had how many lists that had Firefox on it this time? Five. Uh, uh, let's see here. My I had two uh, four. on my list. Yeah, two you lists. each had two lists that had Firefox on. Yeah, it. and somebody somebody had a list going into using Firefox to go into Raiders as well on our last journey. We just mm-hmm. didn't go with that list. Did we? I, I thought that, that we me. discovered that movie when we. Uh... No, no, no. One of us or one of you two had it in a list last week. No, for, I didn't. Last week. I don't. No, because I thought that was one of. Because uh, we found discovered that movie when we was doing the box office for the thing. That oh, mega force, yeah. I don't think we've had that on there. And like, then Tom oh. pointed out, it's like that's a connector to Raiders. And you're like, ooh, yeah. we know. What I just, I literally just listened to that episode today. Okay, so Josh knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think now we've, yeah, we've, uh, we've mulled over my list enough. Let's uh, go down to your twos here, because honestly, of your two lists, Josh, you start off strong with Death Machine, because I. Nigel's already seen it, so he knows what he's getting into. I forgot that you had seen it too, Nigel. And so, um, Dan yeah. starting off with Buckaroo, Buckaroo, also a strong starter. Mm-hmm. And then you both go into solid movies that I enjoy. Highlander, I would edge out over Edge of Tomorrow. Let's see what I did there. Hey, oh. Like you're, so you're saying you would rather Highlander or you would rather Edge of Tomorrow? Oh, this, see, this is the thing, though. Once we get after Edge of Tomorrow, it be, starts getting a little harder to really, you know, pick a clear win- winner because we must stop the unstoppable goes into aliens. And I have never seen that. And I think that pairs very well with Edge of Tomorrow. Mortal Kombat, I've seen a few times. It's a cheesy film. Don't get me wrong. And I'd be curious to see it again. I, well, I wouldn't complain about seeing it again. It's popcorn. It's yeah. a popcorn film. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it's a total popcorn film. Yeah, but after that, we get into two films I've never seen, but one I'm definitely more curious about the uh, than the other, and that is Arcadian. Arcadian is the one that I'm just like, I want to see what's in that box. Yeah, I was hoping the death machine would be a what's in the box for the three of us. But I'm a little sad to learn that you both have seen that movie. Now it's only going to be a what's in the box for me. <laughs> but yeah, I saw the Arcadian and I'm like, I need to put this one in there because I know that'll get Tom interested. <laughs> no, you did. You knew you you knew one of your linchpins here. That's true. And Dan's Art of War. It's, 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 I've not seen it, but I kind of taste what I'm getting into. But the fact that Nigel goes from Aliens to T2, I, I like that. 
part of me really likes that. So you both have me in a situation where I have a Sophie's choice. I can't go wrong with either of these two lists. You really but, can't. They're both really good lists. Yeah, yeah. My the thing that's stopping me from Josh's list is because, one, it's not mine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Honest. Honestly, no. The one thing that's stopping me from it is the same reason why I didn't want to do Cameron Escalation. Because I just didn't want to go from the Terminator to Terminator 2. I just didn't want to keep going from the same movie to the sequel. Mm-hmm, do you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't, yeah. like, I, I presented that list because I'm like, it was too good for me to not present it to you two to have you guys vote on it. Mm-hmm. But it was like one of those, like, I wouldn't choose that list if one of you two presented it. Because for that same reason, like, I'm just like, I love the movie Alien and I love the movie Aliens and I love Terminator and I love Terminator 2. But I just wasn't comfortable going from the first film to the sequel right away without like that being part of our destination. If that was the goal, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I that that was me. I so that's the only thing that's that's pausing me on Josh's uh, list is going from Terminator to Terminator 2. It would be an interesting discussion between the two weeks because those two movies are so very different mm-hmm. from each other. Um and if we did skits, I mean, the Terminator 2 skit would just be the Terminator skit with more special effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one, and who's ever the bad guy has to be the good guy now. But yeah, it, so that that's the only thing that's stopping me from Josh's list. The The movies themselves on it are, are fine, except for Arcadian. I've never heard or even seen it or whatever, but... Mm-hmm. Um, and have, yeah, I, have either of you seen The Art of War? I have. It's I have it, never seen it. it's a it's a paint by numbers action film. With, yeah, it's very it, with, generic and very it's, forgettable. It's very '90s Wesley Snipes. Like it's it's not the best film. I forget what the one on that one was, but it was like either he was it. I if he I was like the, arrested I, by the IRS like right before or right after he did that movie to try to make some kind of cash, but they ended up taking all of it. I forget the story for that, but it's like, he just phoned in his performance and yeah. Cause you know, Wesley Snipes is like a black belt and he has like one scene where he actually uses that in this movie. And I remember watching him being like, well, that was bland. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah. I was hoping it'd be at least enjoyably bad, but it's, ooh, ooh. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I think you might be having it confused with something else, Josh. No, it's... I, I just looked it up. The 2000 movie Art of War with Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I remember that movie. I, 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 let me play, I remember that I forgot that movie. But yeah, that movie was... I, I remember just being very generic. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we were quick to write off uh, Tango and Cash, too, thinking that was going to be the low point of the of the, the journey and ended up being one of the high points of that journey. So but at the same time, like, well, I guess that's, you know what? I was going to try to argue that point, but no, you're exactly right. Because it's the exact same how almost we went into it. Two people hadn't seen it. One of them had. Yeah. And Tom was the one saying that Tango and Cash is meh. Like I remember him like, eh, it's not that great. It's all right. And then we ended up having a blast with that film. So I'm not saying the same thing's going to lightning's going to strike twice. We're going to go through the art of war with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And another one that it's again, this is hard. Also, you have Aliens and then Terminator and Terminator 2 on your list, Josh. That's almost too much of a good thing. I mean, we do want to save some yeah. for... I'm diabetic. Later. I can't have this much cake. <laughs> yeah. It's almost the excess of having Alien and Terminator and Terminator 2 in the same list. That's You get what I'm saying, Josh? Yeah, I do. It's the, I get I get what you're saying. And I didn't have any reservations with that until you guys started pointing. Honestly, I felt like when Dan presented his Cameron list, I didn't have any reservations with it until he presented that one. And then I'm just like, that's that one felt like that cake in Matilda. That Again, chocolate uh, cake. I mean, when I was coming up with lists, that one I came up with like two weeks ago, the Cameron list. Mm-hmm. And one, it was way too easy. Like as soon as I was going through IMDb and I saw that Tom Skerritt was in the rookie and I'm like, oh, Tom Scarrett's an alien. Then Sigourney Weaver's an alien. Michael Bean's in the Terminator. And then Linda Hamilton or Arnold Schwarzenegger's in Terminator. I came up with that list in like 10 seconds. Like yeah. as soon as I saw Tom Scarrett was in the rookie. But I wasn't going to present it. But then I'm like, it does have some good films on it. So I didn't feel right just kind of keeping it to myself. Mm-hmm. But if one of you two had presented it, I definitely wouldn't have voted for it either. I just, um, it, it almost feels dirty. Yeah. Well, you know? this is, keep in mind, this isn't the first time anybody has presented a original and its sequel. 
Like no, you're uh, not. Yeah, you're right. But I I like the uh, symmetry between doing this, doing it, having the last two films, especially since it's a sequel. Like I don't think Terminator is as good a film as Terminator Two, um, mm-hmm. but I do feel like it does have that destination film that we could do it down the road. But at the same time, I don't think that it is be a good destination film as T two. Like when we did Empire, like yeah, leading in Star Wars. In- uh, new hope into empire that would have felt dirtier than this would feel like i like yeah. this thing because we haven't had a original followed by a sequel but we've done a lot of sequels and i think that just in terms of how we per- watch these movies it would be interesting to go back because how many times have we watched a sequel and we've talked about the original but we haven't we, our memories of the original are years in the past like that was mm-hmm. the last time we watched it so I think that would give us a, net, a better view or a better uh, a better better uh, review of our destination film, like having that go back or having those two back to back. But I do understand your argument and how it does it can feel a little dirty. And yeah. Aliens is almost like putting a brownie on top of a cake and then putting ice cream on top. Yeah, and it, my whole thing is it, it doesn't it, feel, it doesn't feel dirty because the movies are sequels. It just kind of feels like it's too easy to do the sequel right after the original. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's that was part of my problem too. Like, it makes for interesting discussion because Terminator and Terminator Two are vastly different films. Like, Terminator Two is a balls to wall action film, and Terminator is more of a horror film. Except that the instead of a monster, it, it's a futuristic cyborg killing machine. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't feel etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so um yeah but like i would say that uh dan's list is definitely more diverse mm-hmm. but i think i have like the movies on mine are i think better rated overall i mean considering we share at least two movies i think mm-hmm. highlander aliens and t2 but i don't know, I don't know what buckaroo is rated uh oh i had it up a second ago let me Apologies to the listeners as we really just nitpick these. This is Mm -hmm. really hard for me because you both have solid lists. You both have like everything going for it. Josh hasn't had a list (laughs) in a while. When was the last time we picked a list for you, Josh? Uh, It was our first uh, journey of season two. Okay, so you have one. You have had one. But mm. we've all had one, so now it's um. But yeah, it's like it's gone. You, uh, me, then you, then Dan just came off a list. Yeah. If you want, so to... both we went Dan, then me, then you, which could always happen. So yeah. Well, I went back to back on two and three on last season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, but Dan had more than Dan had fifty percent of the lists last season too. Dan was well. Dan was just a beast. Dan's always a beast in these. He knows good movies. I mean, it is Dan's birthday, though. (laughs) (laughs) But no, okay, I've hemmed and hawed long enough. Yeah, I'm sorry, Josh. It's, um, I gotta go with the cross dimensions. It's, there's a lot of variety in this list here. Uh, We'll get to Terminator, definitely. But the symmetry of aliens going into T2, just because, well, it's T2. And Aliens, arguably both considered the uh, better, more action-y <clears throat> versions of their film. So I like the dichotomy there. Uh, Art of War is going to be a hard one to watch. But um, you know what? We thought the same about Tango and Cash. And we know what we're getting into with Mortal Kombat. Yes. And I definitely am. You guys sold me on Buckaroo. So I am definitely uh, looking forward to that one now. <laughs> definitely not looking forward to the Art of War. <laughs> But okay. either way, we're watching Aliens. Save this, save this, Dom. Save this, because if he hates Buckaroo, and then when we're doing our reflection episode at the end of this season, mm-hmm. we can splicey splicey in Josh saying, "You guys sold me on Buckaroo. I really wanted to see it," and then we'll go back to Josh's final thoughts on Buckaroo about how much he hates that film, and he's never going to go with one of our lists ever again. Maybe he hates our guts and. He's worst, actively looking for two new people to do the podcast with. Worst journey ever. You <laughs> realize, though, Dan, this in the, the next journey we go on, Josh's lists are going to be nothing but the cream of the crop. There's for the next five or six journeys, 
Josh is going to revenge win. Where are we going after this? this? Where are we going after this? Oh, yeah, oh, Josh. Let me edit that Josh out. is going to just... Yeah, well, no, just bleep him. Go, where are we going after this? And then go, bleep. Oh, yeah. okay. Because we did the same. We did it a couple selection section episodes ago when I was like, I'm really looking forward to getting... Or getting... And when I listened to the episode, Tom had said... It was me going, I'm really looking forward to getting to beep. And then Josh goes, yeah, yeah. me yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Nigel, congratulations! You, we have crossed the dimensions here. So, All right, and I think we already picked the name of this journey, didn't we? What was it? The um... I I didn't. I threw that out there in the script to see if you guys liked it. Called the fire pit rushes to judgment. That's not a bad one, Josh. What do you think of it? That's not a bad one. Feel like we could do better. Okay, I, 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 I no skin off my back. That was just yeah. it popped into my head while I was writing the script. So we're not a hundred percent on fire pit rushes to judgment. Um, did we want to try to keep the FSA um, naming scheme? We've made it halfway. I will admit, like I like the symmetry and keeping it for season two, but I kind of like the names we had in season one better. Like the fire pit strikes back, I felt like that was just perfect. Fire pit, pit strikes out was a suiting, a, a fitting. Yeah. Next one, um, and fire pit swings into adventure. I like that one, but I kind of like the whimsical feel that some of our journeys, the names. They I are. liked. I liked the road to Independence Day, sink or swim, summer tour, field trip to King Town. Um, I liked mm-hmm. those names. Like I thought those were really clever. Like yeah. just you know, Groundhog's Day to Punxsutawney. Yeah. 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 yeah flying high on the hero's journey. I, I like the whimsical level or whimsicalness of those names. And I've been enjoying the ones that we've had on this journey, but the fire pit dot, dot, dot. It's like, I want to double down and just stick with that. But at the same time, I want to go back to the more whimsical ones. Yeah. 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 I mean, we like, don't want to force the bit. Yeah. It's like, cause you got the fire pit does this, but I, I kind of like the when, especially when you're doing your hype section, Tom, it's like, so join us on our field trip to Kingtown or join us on our sink or swim summer tour. It's mm-hmm. like, so join the fire pit swings to adventure. You can't really, it doesn't really work that well. Yeah. I, I had to verb mm. that and add a verbial phrase. And yeah, by the end of this one, was like, I swings into adventure. This is getting repetitive. Mm-hmm. And now we've got to, we're halfway through this season. So I think we're at a dividing point where if we we either stick with it or we uh, go back to the whimsical names. Um, I'm cool either way. Um, I mean, like I said, we don't have to use fire pit rushes to judgment. I just threw that out there. It came. It literally came to me Saturday while I, or Friday, whatever, whatever day I was typing up the script. It came. It just popped in my head. I'm like, oh, what? OK, um, well, again, it's a solid name. Yeah, but, but I, I'm, I'm kind of with Josh, though. I don't think we should always I, I think calling it always the fire pit does blank 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 we're losing some of the creativity we had with the original names mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah. i think we're all like, like we had some like legitimately mm-hmm. like creative kind of names for those yeah, yeah like when dan came up with field trip to kingtown i'm like that's it mm-hmm. that nice. one i just that's woke it. up i mean i was like one of those things like i literally woke up and said field trip to kingtown <gasps> yeah and then i came up with sink or swim summer tour i'm like fuck we could just call it something stupid like sink or swim summer tour no, so, we were we were trying to come up with a terminology for drunk or. Um, I think the, uh, the name came first, yeah. and I'm like, well, we could call it sauced. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Josh does like the acronyms that have a pun to them. Yeah, because you didn't like the one I had for uh, the whistle stop tour. Because, but we ended up using the joke. Remember, electing and representing on the campaign trail. Oh yeah, I like that one. That was a that good was... Uh, tagline. <laughs> it spelled out erect. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my! That was the joke. <laughs> I think I I blocked it out of my mind. Like, oh, yeah, that was a great tag. Oh, damn it! I forgot about that. Was it elected and representing everyone on the campaign trail. <laughs> yes, right. I remember it now. Because yeah. remember, Dan's was uh, has spelled out fake, and I was better under tension today. Spelled out butt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. and mine. Yeah, mine was like uh, friend and I can't remember. It was like friend and and friendly and kind and empathetic or something like that. Like yeah. fake. Oh god, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, okay, okay. Josh makes a sex pun. Take a drink. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we could so, call uh, this one "Terminate the Summer." 
Oh, that is good. Terminate the summer. Let me get that. That is a solid one. But but the only catch is that kind of does like I like that idea, but we need to make it like um like a journey name, like you know a parade, a march, a how can we fit that in there? Because I like that because that that's still like a fire pit terminates the summer. Oh like, yeah, okay. That's what you're uh, so maybe rushes to judge the summer. Uh, no, we can't use parade. What do they call uh? I mean, let's let's also let's let's step outside a little bit of the journey aspect. What if we gave it like a pay per view wrestling sort of name? The summer of dismemberment, the, a summer to dismember. A pun on uh, remember, a summer to remember, a summer to dismember. No, wait, we don't have enough horror films for that to work. Well, let's look at our movies. What's our theme? Like we had adventure films last time. It's across the dimensions. Across, Literally, yeah. almost all of these films, with the exception of Art of War, deal with either a different dimension or an alien world. Mm-hmm. Or time travel. Like, Team Terminator 2 is time travel. Aliens is an alien planet with monster aliens. Uh, Mortal Kombat takes place in a different realm. Highlander take, uh, Highlander is takes place on Earth, but it's kind of like implied magic. Let's just forget the sequels. It's it's implied. The, the immortals are magic. Um, the Art of War is probably going to take... Send us our brains to another dimension. Yeah, and yes, Buck- Buckaroo, like is, Buckaroo is kind of a uh, planet hopping, trippy kind of a '80s film. And if you take in Terminator and its sequels, like there's so much reality splitting there. Mm-hmm. So multi dimensions, mm-hmm. you know, alternate dimension type thing. So hypothetically, you could take that angle, but then you have to acknowledge the sequels. Yeah, okay. I'd rather not, unless we have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have we used vacation yet? No, we haven't. That's perfect. Yeah, so vacation. Vacation termination. Oh, my. There it is. Vacation termination. Oh, I love it. I love this. The rhyming scheme. Vacation termination. Yeah. Oh, that is perfect. Okay. We got our name. VT. Well, it's better than VD. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking. Determination. I see where you're going with here, Josh. Mm-hmm. You want to add a D in front of it? No, no, no. It's just like a no. I'm just thinking like if there's a. I love that. I want to use that, but I feel like we need one more word in there, especially because you know how you abbreviate. Yeah. Like I was talking with my friend Larry this week, and I was telling you about that. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, he likes the acronyms because he can easily identify which um, journey he's on if he goes through and listens to a past episode. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's uh vacation destination termination. VDT. No, I'm thinking vacation to termination. Ooh, that's good too. V2D or V2T. Oh, okay. And, and it plays with the 2 T2. Yeah. V2D yes. or V2T. Yeah, instead of yeah, instead of T2, it's Yeah, it's know. like join the fire pit is on their vacation to termination. Yes. I love it. I love it. They'll be back. <laughs> okay, so tagline, they'll be back. Okay, I like that. Okay, so so Nigel won the list. Um, so he he tells he'll do the whole thing, the thing. And Josh, did you still want to do something like some kind of like the hype? Or yeah, like we could split up the hype if you want to, but I know you know you went work, Tom, on that last time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what should what's the inspiration for the hype here? Cause... Okay, so I was thinking something like this. You have to understand, that thing is out there. Ronald Lacey and Buckaroo Banzai can't be reasoned with. Plus the parents are dead. Clancy Brown to Highlander can't be bargained with. Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat doesn't feel pity, just like Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa to The Art of War doesn't feel remorse. Or Michael Bean in Aliens doesn't feel fear. <laughs> It absolutely will not stop. Get down. Do you take Jeanette Goldstein to Terminator 2? Judgment Day is coming to firepit.podbean.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh make their own fate and face the 90s summer blockbuster Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's the vacation to termination every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, so like that. Okay. I like that. I, okay, so yeah. Yeah, Dan nailed it at one. Um, thank you, Nigel. 
Dude, I that, I love the first Terminator film, but that's why not picking my Cameron list or Josh's list kind of hurt. But I mean, I want to do that movie someday. But yeah, and he's like, it can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. And I love that scene. He looks like someone completely scared out of his goddamn mind when he's saying Dude, that. Michael Bain is he's such a good actor. Yeah, he's underrated as hell. As far as like his what his range is and all that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but when, he got when pigeonholed he, into B movies, schlock films, and it's just like he he deserves better than that. Well, I just I love that scene in Terminator because he's supposed to be this battle hardened soldier, you know, that's seen the worst war we could even possibly fathom ever. Mm-hmm. And then you know when she when he's like telling her he's like you don't understand this thing is he's out there you know mm-hmm. oh man well congratulations on beating me again dan and me yeah you beat everybody dan we I, get it you know how to make a good list i i told you guys it was my birthday month i was gonna bring it i'm sorry i and dan, i did you brought it all right <laughs> so congratulations i mean we are thank per- you i mean it is thank you it is my birthday month when we did you know just you know premiere this quiet movie. tom nobody just stop yeah it's just <laughs> quite yeah and that's it for tonight's show as a reminder you can find us on spotify itunes amazon or wherever fine podcasts are sold or downloaded or traded or bartered or whatever they're done uh our regular episodes are tuesdays at 6 p.m please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose to listen to us on we really appreciate it it helps us out uh please be sure to leave a review of our podcast wherever you heard it from it helps us uh, show up on lists uh, of you're either searching for uh, movie podcasts or if you even search the movie that we recorded uh, uh, or watched that mo- that week uh, will show up on reviews of that movie. So please be sure to leave a review for our podcast. Yes. And also uh, to add to Spotify and iTunes, we have a YouTube now, which will be linked in the episode's description. I'm trying to do a better job of doing that myself, but as well, be sure to join us on our Discord channel. The link to that will be found in the episode's description at discord.me slash firepit. You'll get notifications of new episodes, and even better, you can engage in discussions with other fans of the show. So hop on in. It is a fun time. And as always, you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com if you want to send a slightly longer message or just more intimate message. That sounded creepy. But you can send us any kind of a message you want through email, and it won't be broadcast out to the public like it would be on Discord. You can also like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in the episode's description as well. Excellent. And uh, I would like to shout out, as always, Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, She's coming to visit uh, in person next week, and she'll be joining us on an episode. Uh, I think she'll be joining us on the Highlander episode. So uh, looking forward to having you. And we, as always, appreciate you listening and appreciate the support. And I would also like to shout out Zencaster for um, saving our asses as always, making the recordings go as smooth as possible, uh, making the life of our editor a little bit easier because God knows his two cohorts make it as hard as possible. So a uh, special shout out to Zencaster. Yes. And I'd also like to shout out the editing tool, which makes it possible for me. Audacity, much like Zencaster, it is free. You can pay actually no you don't have to pay for a darn thing with audacity but it provides many tools many features that help me make us sound as sexy as possible josh you want to give him a little bit of a taste of that sexy how you doing baby wow yeah yes i'm already watching those levels go put me in your crotch and just let me go Josh is taking it too far. <laughs> I'd also uh, like to shout out one of our Facebook followers, one of many, uh, Don. Thank you for listening to us. Don is one of the hundreds and growing Facebook followers out there who come in, whether to see if we're posting anything new, just check in every so often, listen to the podcast regularly, or just like having it there, knowing that we're there. Thanks for joining and keeping the fire pits burning. And I'd like to give a special shout out to one of my friends, Katie. 
Katie is moving on to bigger and better cities and things. Um, going back to college, going back for a little more art and other art stuff. So, Katie, I salute you. Good luck out there. You will be missed, but you will not be forgotten. And I actually have a few shout outs tonight. First off, I've got to shout out my uh, friend Nick. He's been uh, listening to the episode. He's a little behind, but he's been listening to the episode. And uh, we went to go hang out on Saturday night, and he told me that he's looking forward to watching or listening to the Blade Runner episode. Needless to say, he wrote me a book today after finishing it. <laughs> All the reasons why you were wrong? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He's like, you need to watch this movie, Not Distracted. I'm going to start carrying your show. I want a British name, to which I replied, you have to earn that. Yeah, that's not something we just, yes. we don't dole those out like business cards, yes. sir. But okay. second, I got to shout out my uh, another co-worker, Larry. He's on Discord. Uh, he came by for a work-related thing, and he, we was in my office for a couple of hours, and we talked for like an hour about work. But then over my lunch period, we sat and we BSed about the podcast for like an hour, and he gave me a ton of feedback. Some of it good. Most of it good. Some of it be like, yeah, but you guys do have some pretty shitty episodes. He didn't say that. I kind of inferred that. But no, no, he gave me a lot of really good feedback. And I appreciate that, Larry. So thank you. Um, it was always great to sit down and talk with you, as always. And finally, last but not least, I am going to shout out my buddy Tim. Um, not Tom, Tim. There's this one letter difference. He is a high school friend of mine. And this man is an artist. All my life, I've been like... Tim, I need this art. Do art for me. And then I don't have to worry about it. He will get it to me, and I know I'm going to like it. Like, I tried to be a brewery at one point. I brewed beer. I was uh, like, hey, Tim, give me, a, uh, give me a label or a logo for a beer brewing company. And I just gave him an idea of what I was wanting. I got something back, and it was awesome. And my only regret is I never started a beer brewery to use that logo. But I spoke with Tim, and I'm like, hey, Tim would you make me a logo for the fire pit podcast? And he's like, I thought you would never ask. Cause the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck you. No way. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he's uh, so he's going to be working on a uh, stylized logo to which I am going to say this. We are going to make shirts to give away on this, uh, this podcast sometime. I don't know when. So I'm Tim's always like, I, I, I can't hold myself accountable. I need, I need the deadline. So Tim, if you want to see these out, you've got to start working on it, man. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. So I'm going to make shirts with that logo on it. And I know Larry, that was one other thing that Larry mentioned. is He's like, I want a shirt. I want a shirt that says, yeah, let's watch a movie, guys, or something. So he wants shirts, so we need to start making them. Now, I don't know if these are going to be a permanent run or whatever, but so shout out to those guys. And that's just something to look forward to. Nothing is in the works. As a matter of fact, Tom and Dan, this is probably the first they're hearing of it. But that's all I have got. Well, that's quite a lot you got there, Josh. You I know, be- right? So I guess that's it for shout outs. Um, where are we going next week, Dan? Um, we're going to Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. That's that kangaroo show, right? Yes, it's about a banana. Kangaroo banana. I'm looking forward to this. A banana roo. Banana roo. Mm-hmm. An eight dimensional banana roo. I'm s- don't think that's what that's about. I'm. What does pretty- Tom know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going based off the title. Sounds yep. like a kangaroo with a banana, so works for me. Yep. I'm pretty sure not, but we'll find out next weekend, won't we? Of course we will. Because I'll be here. And by here, I mean I'm definitely going to be at, like on the podcast, you know. I'm not going to be here in Ohio, but I'll be here on the podcast. Excellent. <sighs> well, until we get to the banana roo dimension hopping space something, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. And I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there.